By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And welcome back at the Camel Trophy, the old school Magic the Gathering tournament in the Netherlands that plays according to the gentleman's rules. So that means no Mind Twist and no Library of Alexandria are present in this tournament. And we have now reached round number five. And in round number five, we have a really cool matchup for you because we're going to look at Roy, who's playing a Titania's Tron deck. It's, it's quite interesting, and he's taking on me, and I'm playing Mono Red Goblins. I've called it Goblin Bowl. Now, before I go into the deck text of both of these decks, I've got lovely deck photos for you guys. I would first like to point out that, as always, you can also choose to skip this section. I know that some of you prefer to do that. The easiest way to do this is by checking out the description below. There you will find several timestamps. One of those timestamps reads MTG Games. Click on there, and it'll take you straight to the game action. And also, in that same description, you can find more information information about this tournament for example about the rules that are being followed for this event okay um, I've said all I wanted to say here in the introduction that means I'm going to continue with the deck text I'm gonna start with the deck of my opponent let's take a look at Titania's song by Roy and here we see the deck of Roy now I really love this deck because he's playing Tron which you know people that follow the channel know that I love to Tron lands and I love to build old school decks with them. I think it's a real challenge. And he's also playing with Titania's Song. That's a really cool combination. And he's playing with mana batteries. I've never had mana batteries on the channel before. So I actually feel, Roy, that you've already won without even starting to play because I just love this deck. Uh, maybe it's good to just, you know, start from the start. What does he want to do with this deck? Now, first of all, we've got the Tron Lands, right? So if you've got Urza's Tower, Urza's Mine, and Urza's Power Plant all together in play, all of a sudden they tap the Mine and the... Uh, Power plant tap for two mana instead of one when those three are in play and the uh, tower taps for three mana So that means you can generate seven mana out of those three lands now What are you going to do with all that mana? Well in the case of Roy you just want to play out a lot of Expensive artifacts maybe even make some tokens with the hive draw some cards of your gem day tome, you know um, Get some in shamans back with your skull of orm control the board with your with your icy manipulators create tons of mana with your mana batteries I mean that that still, that cracks me up that that card's in here. Uh, but more importantly, it combines really well with Titania's Song. So Titania's Song is an enchantment from antiquity. It's a green one, one green and three to cast. That reads, each non-creature artifact loses all abilities and becomes an artifact creature with power and toughness equal to its mana value. If Titania's Song leaves the battlefield, this effect continues until the end of turn, which is pretty cool, right? So if you're going to attack, for example, and your opponent then plays a disenchant on your Titania's Song, your artifacts... They don't turn into artifacts. They're still creatures until the end of turn. That's one of these unique things about these cards, which I completely love. Always read the the, the, the text on the card and check the oracle text, and you'll be surprised, you know. So this uh, ability of Titania's Song lasts until end of turn, and that can be very relevant. Now, if we look at this deck, right, he wants to generate a lot, lots of mana. He wants to play out his, you know, expensive artifacts, and then he wants to turn them into creatures with Titania's Song and probably win the game. Now, before he can do that, he's got some ways to, you know, generate extra mana, ha has a little bit of ramp in the form of Felber Stones. He also has Atox in the deck, which is an additional win con. You know, if he cannot get the Titania's Song to stick, he can always try to win with the uh, with the Atok instead. What I kind of like as well is this combination between Atok and the Hive. The Hive can make tokens, artifact creature, one on flying wasps. You can feed them to the Atok. I mean, it's not ideal, but it is some nice card synergy for later in the game. And of course, um, I have to talk about the mana batteries. I guess the mana batteries can work really, really well with the four fireballs here in the deck of Roy. So he's actually, you know, he's got some direct damage in here. But um, the mana battery, it's it, it's so cool. So here you see the red mana battery. Battery is also playing with the green one. I love the art of both of them. So they're four to cast. You can pay two and tap it and put one counter on red mana battery. Then you can tap it, remove any number of charge counters because you're putting a charge counter on there from the red mana battery. Add the amount of red, then add, equal to the charge counters, and then add an additional red. Right? So the card itself, some people tend to forget that, is that when you tap the card itself as well, it also generates a red mana, right? And the green mana battery generates a green mana, exactly. So you do pay four, but you do get one mana instantly back in return. And maybe with this deck, 
You just need that red mana to cast that one fireball. Remember, fireball in combination with Tron, another really good, uh, you know, good deal. So yeah, this is the deck of Roy. All I can say is that I, I really love this deck of Roy, and I'm hoping to see the mana batteries you know, just to see them on the channel. I also love your Walls of Ice, by the way. They're 07. They're brilliant in blocking my Ball Lightnings. Talk about that. Let's take a look at my deck, Goblin Ball. And here we see my deck, Goblin Ball. Well, Goblin Ball is quite a simple deck. It's mono red. I wanted to play with four Goblin Kings. I wanted to go Goblins. And when I posted this picture on my Instagram, the first question that everybody asked was, why aren't there any Goblin Grenades in the deck? That is because, remember, we're playing according to the Swedish rules, so without Fallen Empire. And I actually like the challenge because you don't see a lot of goblins anymore in Swedish. When people play, you know, red aggro, they tend to choose the Atok route, you know, with the Vices, Ank of Mishras, and then the Atox and stuff. So it's kind of a different deck. So I thought when I was brewing this, okay, I'm going to focus on the Goblin King. What does the Goblin King do that an Atog does not? Well, first of all, it gives all the other Goblins plus one, plus one. So it's obvious that I want to play with a lot of other Goblins. So I'm playing with Goblin Balloon Brigade and Goblins of the Flark. And remember, Goblin King is also a Goblin. So if you've got two Goblin Kings in play, they pump each other. Another thing that the Goblin King does is it gives Mountain Walk, right? So I thought, let's combine Mountain Walk with Blood Moon because Blood Moon turns all the non-basics into mountains. So if I've got, you know, Goblin Kings and Goblins and Blood Moon on the board, my army is unstoppable. Quite simple, right? Sometimes you don't have to make things complicated. Then I thought, okay, if my opponent, all the non-basics of my opponent are like turned off, you know, they're turned into mountains, it also means that those pesky mazes of if are now all of a sudden mountains. That means that Bull Lightning could be quite a good card in here. It's a 6-1 Trampler with haste, so it can attack the turn it comes into play. So that's kind of how the Bull Lightnings found a place in this deck. And I have to admit, I also like the idea of playing Lightning Bolt, Chain Lightning, Bull Lightning in a deck. I think it's like uber old school aggressive. Um, and then, of course, I'm playing with four uh, black vices because black vice is like if you if you draw that in your opening hand it's like a free bolt at least right and if you play it after wheel of fortune a card that's also in here you know it's also guaranteed damage for your opponent i'm also playing with bronze tablet again because it's guaranteed damage this deck is really super ubro aggro right i want to win this as fast as i can that's what I want to do. Now, there is one obvious problem with this deck, and that is COP Red. So if my opponent starts playing COP Red, I need to go and have a look at my sideboard. So in my sideboard, we see two Nevernal's Disc. To deal with that, I also play with four Mistress Factories in my deck, because there is a plan with this deck where I board out my Bow Lightnings, and then I board in my Mistress Factories and some other stuff. Like, there's, there's a whole idea against specific types of decks. I'm also playing um, with Mana Barbs. Mana Barbs is a card I think that is still kind of underplayed, because Mana Barbs deals a damage every time you tap a land. Now, I hardly need any land, but for my opponent, it's super annoying. Also, Mana Barbs works great against COP Red. Think about it. My opponent taps one mana to prevent damage from a red source with COP Red, but then takes the damage if I have Mana Barbs in play. So that way it kind of, you know, at least uh, guarantees some damage to my opponent. This is my deck Goblin Bowl. We've seen the deck of my opponent Roy. I think that I'm a favorite here simply because my deck is going to go so, so fast. But if Roy can get those uh, Walls of Ice out early and can kind of hope that I don't find a Blood Moon to make my creatures unblockable, or my Goblins at least, then I think he's got a fighting chance. Anyway, we looked at the deck of Roy. This is my deck. Now let's go to the match. Game number one. Here we go. I'm sitting on the right with the red playmat playing, playing Goblin Ball. And opposite to me is Roy playing his deck Tron Song. And he's playing Tron. He's playing red and green with Titania's Song. Here we see my opening hand. Doesn't look great. I think two goblins with the Flark, but that Wheel of Fortune is really good. Here we see the hand of Roy. So he's got lots of land. He's got Fireball and Atok. He also has a factory in there. So I'm guessing we're both going to keep. And, oh, I missed that one. There was a Black Vice in hand. That makes this hand a lot better because next turn I can play out those two goblins with the Flark. And after that, my Wheel of Fortune. So we, uh, we see Roy here taking his first points of damage because of that Black Vice. Now we have to see if Roy can kind of ramp it up a little bit. He cannot. Passing the turn, that's already a problem for Roy here. Black Vice is doing so much already and now he can play out two Goblins of the Flark. This is a perfect hand for me. I mean, next turn, even if Roy can play something out, 
I'm going to play out my Wheel of Fortune. He's going to take an additional three points of damage. And, you know, my Vice is really doing work here. He's going to go to 14. Yeah, I'm pointing out the Black Vice. Now he's really in trouble. And it's, we're in for a really short game, I think. He's going to tap two. He's going to try to empty his hand. Okay, there's an Atox, so that makes a little difference. But remember, the mountain is giving my Goblins of the Flark mountain walk. Wonder what I drew into. That's mountain number three. I'm going to attack here with my two Goblins of the Flark. He tries to block them, but they have mountain walk, so he cannot. He's going to drop to 12. <laughs> what am I going to do here? Ooh, play out a Blood Moon. So I just drew into that Blood Moon, not playing out my Wheel of Fortune yet. Choosing to go for Blood Moon first. And now Roy takes two points of damage, gonna go to 10. He's got another Atok in hand there, so he could play that out land, and then Atok also has a Fireball. But I mean, next turn, if he's still alive, he can play a Fireball on both my Goblins with the Flark if I don't draw into a Goblin King, so that would be quite good for him. Let's see what he's gonna do. He's a little bit in the tank, realizing that this is going too fast. He needs to figure something out to stay alive. He's already on 10. Life total is halved. I believe he's got six cards in hand, so there is a forest. Tapping two here. There's then probably the other Atok. He can attack with the other one. Exactly. Gonna put me here on 19. But this is not solving the problem for Roy. Gonna tap three. Are we now gonna see the Wheel of Fortune? Oh, there's a Bull Lightning 6-1. Attacking now into Roy. This is a huge problem for him. And he is going to block, meaning he still takes four points of damage. Going to go to six and then two points from the Flark. So he ends up on four. I mean, this is super tough for Roy here. How many cards does he have in hand? Is it six or five? Five cards in hand. So he's going to go to three. This is tough for him. What can he really do? There is another land, which is a mountain because of the, uh, the Blood Moon. He can play that double... Fireball at least. And I guess that's a way for him to stabilize. So now he can kill both my goblins of the flark. The problem, of course, is he's playing against a deck with four chain lightnings, four lightning bolts, and bolts, and look at his life total. The man's on three. He's living on borrowed time. I mean, and I know that feeling. I've played against these decks myself. Exactly. Chain lightning, end of the road. And I think this was just a perfect opening hand for me i had everything i didn't even need the wheel of fortune i think the main reason that i didn't play it out is you know i was winning so i chose to go for the blood moon instead i didn't want to give him like new ammo that maybe could save him out of this situation anyway uh we're both gonna dive into our sideboards at least now roy knows exactly what i want to do and i actually don't know that much about roy's deck so i mean in that sense he is a slight favorite he knows more about my deck but I mean, my deck is brutal if it works the way it is. Anyway, we're going we're gonna to dive into our sideboards and we'll catch back up with you in game number two. Game number two is about to begin. At least Roy is now on the play. So even if I have a vice, it's not going to be that good. Mm, only one mountain in his hand. I do have double chain, a Goblins of the Flark, and a Copper Tablet. Here we see the hand of my opponent. There's a factory, a maze that can stop something. And a red card, was that a bolt? We also saw a factory. He's starting with a factory in pass, so he is keeping, I'm keeping as well, keeping a one lander, but I think this was a mountain from the top, so I'm kind of lucky. Playing Goblins of the Flark, turn one. If he can now find a land, he can animate the factory. I wonder if he's gonna do that. I mean, he is of course, I mean, I'm the aggro player, so he's more into control position looks like he's a little bit into tank so playing an Urza's tower he's thinking about it he's thinking about animating it i think i would always keep it on defense even though it's kind of a free attack because okay it's gonna ramp up now i get it he's playing a felwer stone that makes sense like i wouldn't attack in this situation because every life point matters against super aggressive decks uh 
like the one that I'm playing with. Attacking here with goblins up to Flark. Probably going to play on my Copper Tablet here, exactly. So Copper Tablet deals one damage to the player whose upkeep it is. And it counts for the both of us. So now it's Roy's turn. He's going to take one damage. Let's see if we missed any triggers, shall we? I mean, this is really one of those cards where players tend to miss triggers. And I always feel it's, it's a responsibility of the person who plays it to really keep a close eye on it. Obviously, both players are doing that, but... I mean, if I see my opponent missing the Copper Tablet trigger, then it's always kind of, you know, I feel like it's kind of my fault, like I should be on top of that. Anyway, he's playing out an Urza's Mine. Would be cool to see him get Tron. There is a green mana battery. This is so cool. I love this. Thank you, Roy. This is the first time on Timmy Talks that we see a mana battery. Or at least maybe we saw it in the in the EDH old school games because sometimes we see mana batteries there. But let me put it this way. This is the first time definitely in a tournament and also in a one-on-one -on -one match right here on the channel. Fantastic. So mana battery, a card for four from Legends. Two and tap. You can put a counter on mana battery and then you can tap the mana battery and you can get one green in case of the green mana battery. And you can take any amount of uh, counters off for additional green mana. So really cool to see this here. I don't think it's going to help um, it's going to help Roy much unless he can find a forest and, of course, Titania's Song. Titania's Song is also great to turn off that Copper Tablet of mine. So I'm attacking him again. Looks like I'm stuck on two here. Two uh, mountains, that is. Cannot find a third land. I do have those two Chain Lightnings in hand. Choosing to go for one Chain Lightning and a Goblins of the Flark. So I'm going to put Roy here to 14. Gonna pass the turn. He's gonna take another damage. I mean, the co copper tablet's really doing work here. When you're already under pressure, you don't really need that extra damage from the tablet. I mean, the tablet spot was also competing with the Ankh of Mishra spot. You know, that's also a good card in this type of deck. Anyway, there's a soul ring by Roy. He can start making counters. I think the problem for Roy is that I mean. Uh, he's under. He's already on 13. That's a problem for him. He's got, of course, the, the, the factory now to block the goblins of the flark so he can somewhat stabilize. It would be really, really good for him to kind of draw into Titania's song. But he needs, of course, green mana. Well, he's got green mana with the green mana battery, so that's, that's no problem. He's going to make a red, it seems, with the Felwer Stone. Going to tap a tower. Is he going to cast uh, an Atog? That would be quite good on this board as well. He's going to tap four. Again, he's going to kill both Goblins of the Flark. He did the same thing in game one. He's doing this also in game number two. Really nice to see. And then attacking. This is quite a good move by Roy. I mean, I've got no Goblins left. I've got two Mountains. Now remember, my deck really kind of needs three Mountains to start casting the, the Goblin Kings and, of course, the Bull Lightnings. So this is not great for me. I'm going to drop here to 16. I'm under a little bit of pressure. I'm going to tap two. Another copper tablet. I'm just going full in with this deck. <laughs> I'm like, you know what? I've got one. I've got one purpose, and that's the deal damage. That's the purpose of this deck. That's what I'm going to do, even if it hurts myself. Because now he can swing in for two. He can put me on 14. Then I take two damage from my own tablet. It's going to be put in 12. Exactly, so he's going to attack. Wonder if he can play something else. There is a Taiga. So even more land. He's a little bit land flooded at the moment. Also with the Felwer Stone, the Soaring, and the Mana Battery. Look at that. Dropping to 12. I'm on a 6 turn clock. Well, actually make that a 3 turn clock with the Factory. But now I found a 3rd Mountain. Do I have a Bull Lightning? There's a Bull Lightning. Attacking, oh, Lightning Bolt. It's a bit of a flavor fill, but it works though. Lightning Bolt on Bull Lightning. Oh, ho, ho, I'm in trouble. And he's going to put a counter on the green mana battery. That is just awesome. That is awesome. You know, if you have this, I always have this imaginary bingo card in my head, magic bingo card, and it goes ding, 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 ding when a player does something like this. You know, using a mana battery at a tournament. That's awesome. That's I have so much respect for that, Roy. And actually, it's looking pretty good for you. Yeah, you're going to drop to 9 because of the Copper Tablets, but you can attack me for 2, put me on 10, then I'm going to go to 8 with the Copper Tablets. I'm a, I'm, I only have 2 more turns left in that case. 
Gonna put me on 10. I'm really in trouble here. I mean, this bull lightning had to hit, but it didn't. Gonna go to eight. Do I have another bull lightning? That's the question. Gonna tap one. Am I gonna play? Gonna play chain lightning. This is interesting. I mean, he's sending it back. Oh, I'm not sure if that's a good decision because that means he would take six from the chain lightnings. He's thinking about it. He is sending it back. Wow. So first he's going to go on six. Then he's sending the chain lightning back. He's going to put me on five. But of course, I've got two mountains open. I can send it back. That's exactly what I does. What I do, I'm going to put him on three. Oh, I think, I think, Roy, you're making a mistake here. I think you shouldn't have sent it back. But maybe you've got another plan. I don't know. Maybe you want me to be on five. Then again, yeah, maybe that's the only reason I can think of. I'm going to make another counter past the turn. I'm on five. He can put me on three next turn on one. If he can deal one extra damage, he's on one now. But if he can deal one extra damage, it's going to be a 1-1. One, one. Oh man, this is this is exciting stuff. He's going to animate, going to put me on 3. He needs to deal one more point of damage. If he could have found, for example, another factory, he could have pumped the factory to deal 3 points of damage. No, he cannot. He's going to put me on 1. Oh, Roy, Roy, Roy. Why did you send back the chain lightning? Why did you do that? Or doesn't it even matter anymore? Oh yeah, there's a detonate coming in from the sideboard, killing Roy on the spot, but you were so close. You were so extremely close. I, I'm just going to say it again. I love your deck. And despite the fact that I've now won the match, we did decide to play a game number three. So if you want to watch that game as well, stick around because that's what we're going to do right now. Game number three. So a game purely for the funsies. Here we see my opening hand. Ooh, I've molted down to five. This is a good hand though. I've got a land. I've got, I can't play everything out with that one land, by the way. There we see the hand of Roy. It's hard to see. We do see a gem de tome there. There is an Urtz's power plant and a pass. There is a Goblins of the Flark. There is an Urtz's mine. I, I hope, Roy, that this game you get Tron and you can also show us the Titania song. And you can kind of show the idea of your deck because we haven't really seen that yet in game one and two. Even more Goblins of the Flark from my way, by the way. So I'm just going to attack for two next turn. It seems going to tap three. Yeah, this is a really cool card. Oh, I gotta admit something. I forgot the name. That's so annoying. But I know what it does, though. You can attack and he can pay one. And then target source uh, damage uh, is reduced to one. So, for example, if I play a Bull Lightning and he uses that one, he pays one, targets a Bull Lightning. He doesn't take six damage, but only one damage. It's something with Barrier in it, maybe, in the name. I forgot. It's a beautiful card. Not reprinted after Unlimited. Uh, we see a Goblin Balloon Brigade, by the way, coming from my side of the board. Haven't seen that Goblin yet. So it's a 1-1, one, one, and for one red, you can give it flying. It's got a hilarious flavor text. So if you've got a moment, check out the flavor text. It's really cool. Looks like he's stuck here. Does he have to pass the turn? That is rough, Roy. That is not what you want to do against, uh, against my deck. If you could just find maybe... A creature, a factory would be quite nice for him here to try to block my goblins because now he's taking three points of damage, going to drop to 14. And I'm going to play a lightning bolt. I'm, oh, I'm doing this on end step of Roy. Okay, I already want to say, don't understand why I'm do, doing that in my own main, but it looks like Roy already had to take another. I'm making it flying for some reason, just for fun, I guess. So he's found a red source. Oh, again, the fireball. I love this. I mean, Roy is doing this every single game. Game one, two Flarks. Game two, two Flarks. Game three, three uh, two Flarks. That fireball really has Goblin of the Flarks written all over it. That is so funny. And it's pretty good, actually. I mean, the problem here is he's already on eight. Now he's on seven. There's a pass. 
It would be really cool if you can find a Titania song and maybe Ursus Tower and kind of go completely wild. Because we haven't really seen, you know, Roy's deck really running, doing what it wants to do. So looking at his hand here, trying to decide, there's another Fireball in there. I don't think you want a Fireball for one. Going to tap four. What is he going to do? Is okay, he's playing a fireball on me. Oh, and on the goblin. Okay, now I get it. I'm like, why would you do it on me? But he does it on the balloon brigade and on my life total. So I'm dropping one life to 19. Found another mountain. That's nice. I think three is kind of the amount of mountains I need. He's gonna tap four here. There's Titania song. That is so cool. It can now attack me for three. That is so sweet. That is so cool. So he's going to put me on 16. Finally, now we, at least we see bits of what, you know, Roy's deck wants to do. If he can find a tower, that would be really funny. Playing a lightning bolt and end step on the life total of Roy. So I was kind of thinking, should I play it on the 3-3 artifact creature or on the life total of Roy? It was kind of tough. And I'm passing the turn here. I did find a third mountain, but no ball lightning, it seems. And I'm actually happy because I want to see more of Roy's deck. I don't want this game to end already. Look at that. This is now a 4-4 because of the uh, Titania song. That is so nice. So he's going to deal three points of damage. He's going to put me on 13. No, I'm going to kill it. Because of that book, there's even more pressure, so I'm now going to go for the creature. Land number four. It looks like I'm not. Oh, Eternal Flame! Oh, ho, ho, ho. oh Eternal Flame! What a classy way to finish it here. Uh, I'm, I'm so sorry, Roy, because your deck is now finally on full steam. And I play Eternal Flame, but it was so much fun to play against you and i really 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 appreciate the deck that you've brought to this tournament i've played him before and he usually brings the coolest decks uh with him you know it's really fun it's really the old school spirit and i hope you can appreciate my eternal flame finishing it here with eternal flame a beautiful card from the dark what it does it's four mana two retin two for a sorcery that deals damage to your opponent equal to the amount of mountains you control but also half of that to me so i take two damage but my opponent in this case takes four and that was enough to finish the game so this was it for today um this was round number five. That means that uh, next week we are going to jump into the top eight. I've got beautiful top eight matches for you all the way to the finals, by the way. So if you enjoy these, if you enjoy the Camel Trophy, please take a moment to hit that subscribe button and ring that bell. Because if you do that, you will be notified whenever I post new content here on the channel. And if you're already a subscriber, thank you so much. Please take a moment to like, comment, and share this on your socials. It's completely free and it really helps the channel move forward. Talk about moving forward. I also have a beautiful Patreon page. Check out patreon.com slash timmytalks and find out all about the Patreon program. It's what I can already tell you. It already starts for a dollar a month. You get access to the Timmy Talks Discord and you, you get to join all the Timmy Talks online tournaments. So maybe that's something for you. Maybe not, but please take a moment and check out patreon.com slash Timmy Talks. And another perk is that your name will be mentioned in the end scroll. What end scroll? This end scroll. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor?